I just wanted to, to share, I had a, a wonderful um, experience uh, yesterday. Um, ben um, Simchek was uh, married at uh, the Pine Knob Mansion, and I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to go there, but it's a really, really special place. It was a wonderful, wonderful time. And it's interesting, I, I learned a, a couple of things. First of all, um, I realized it was brought to my attention that for 33 years, <laughs> for pronouncing their last name wrong. <laughs> it's not Simchek. It's, what was it again? <laughs> Shimchok. Ah. Shimchok. I said, well, after 33 years, thanks for telling me. <laughs> and then um, when Ben was a little boy, and all the, all the Shimchoks, I'm sorry, who were raised at uh, St. Mark, um, when Ben was a little boy, he was here at, at church, and um, I don't know who was preaching, but obviously it wasn't me, because apparently it was really boring. But anyway, um, anyway, at the end, at the end, this little boy yells out, finally! <laughs> so yesterday, when the wedding was concluded, before I announced the, the new couple, Ben and Lauren Chimchog, his mother yelled out, finally! <laughs> so it was a really wonderful, wonderful time. Great. It's a wonderful uh, opportunity and a blessing to be involved in people's lives at, at such a time. This morning, as you were listening, and if you have on occasion a tendency to look for a thread, a common theme that today runs from Genesis through 1 Corinthians 15 all the way to Luke 6, well then you are in luck, because in a word that theme is reversal. Reversal. Joseph resists the urge for sweet revenge. Instead he pours forgiveness sweeter by far upon his brothers. Paul this morning speaks with incredible confidence in the resurrection of Jesus. In essence, he says, life will overturn death because of God. And in the Sermon on the Plain, which really is a condensed, finely tuned version of Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, love overturns hate. All of it's good stuff. Really good stuff, and yet no doubt of all that there is, is the world our senses perceive. If the only way to conduct ourselves and to live are the ways of the world, which all of us know well and practice. The words this morning, let's be honest, sound kind of lofty, irrelevant, downright impractical. Interestingly, if you look at some of the sermon titles, as I did, that Luke 6 has, has begotten, one of them was simple, yet not so simple. Makes sense to me. I can see where she got that. Or the one that I really liked, the impossible possibility. Then obviously I would say this morning that we are not alone in hearing these words and hearing these stories and thinking all, it's all a little bit too much, a little out of touch with the life in which, the real world in which we live, a little naive, a little impractical. As you well know, because I am a person of great theological depth, I couldn't help but read and reread and reread the texts this week and begin to make connections with a classic of American film, Citizen Kane. Actually, that's not true. The classic American film, Stripes. With Bill Murray. That's a long way from Orson Welles. But you know the scene? You know the scene? Um, all the guys are gathered around beloved Sergeant Polka in the barracks, and they are sharing their stories. How it is that they came to this place, this time, to join the United States Army. And the late, great John Candy, otherwise known as Dewey Oxberger, <laughs> it's not a great name, Dewey Oxberger, never yes. baptized one, but I can always hope. <laughs> well, the Ox shares with Sergeant Holka and the rest of his comrades that he decided to join the army because he needed to lose weight. 
And he said to, he says to the sergeant, he said, you've got a great program here. Eight weeks, right? Lots of work. He goes, I lose weight. I become a lean, mean fighting machine. And the look of dismay on Sergeant Holka's face is all too palpable. And then the equally great and the late Harold Ramis, who confesses to his comrades <laughs> that he's a pacifist. <laughs> but nevertheless, he says, I want you all to know that if we ever find ourselves in combat, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he shares this priceless nugget of family wisdom that I want you to hear and I want you to take home with yourselves. He said, my father always told me from the time I was knee high, he always told me, never, ever, ever hit another person in anger unless you're absolutely certain you can get away with it. <laughs> Finally, we think this morning, now there's something that's practical. There's something that's reality. And the truth be told, something that doesn't challenge us at all, but more or less confirms the way we live. All of us, all of us, from time to time. Never hit back unless you're absolutely certain get away with it. Of course, this morning, that's not what Jesus said. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, turn to them the other also. I'm not big on titles for sermons, but if I had to come up with one, I would call this sermon Five Ways to Become a Chump. <laughs> or maybe how to, how to become a doormat for the kingdom. There's a good one. And in honor of these texts, everyone who has come to church this morning, as you take leave, the ushers will be sure to affix to your map a sign that says, kick me. <laughs> Except that's not what Jesus is saying either. This is not a call, listen carefully. This is not a call to demean yourself. This is not a call to think less of yourself. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. You are a child of God. There is a dignity deep, deep within you. The founders of this nation, who put their, literally put their necks on the line, the one who wrote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people, all people are endowed with inalienable rights. Where do you think that came from? Hello. Where do you think that came from? It came from the scriptures, exactly. It came from our own faith. The faith of the Jewish people and the faith of the Christian people. That's where it comes from. And in essence, again, as I said before, this is not an invitation to think less of yourself. It is not an invitation to look at evil that is perpetrated. And I know there are people who have problems with that word evil. I don't. I don't. You shouldn't. Evil perpetrated against the powerless and the innocents. This summer, it was a beautiful young woman named Molly Tippis. Just recently, and there have been too many of these stories, a beautiful young woman with a little child with the rest of her life to look forward to by the name of Kelsey Barrett. It is not an invitation to look at such things and to say, oh well, what are you going to do? What Jesus is saying is this. Stand up tall. Stand up tall. Put your shoulders back. Act as if you're someone, because you are. Resist and fight back. Shove it back in their face. But you do it in a different way. In a creative way. As Peterson translates it, let your enemies take this home. Take this home with you. I remember this all the time. Because more than you, I need help. Let your enemies bring out the best in you. Not the worst. Let the people who come against you bring out the best in you, not the worst. And so Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Not an invitation to become a punching bag. But in that culture, when someone would slap you, they often slapped you with the back of their hand. It was a way of saying that you are so beneath me, I wouldn't dignify slapping you with an open hand. And so 
Jesus says when they do that, turn to them the other cheek. Because if they slap you, if they slap you, they will have to slap you with an open hand. They will have to acknowledge that you are an evil. If someone takes your shirt, gift wrap your coat. And in that culture, the clear understanding was that to leave someone half naked without a shirt or a coat in the face of the cold of the night was unthinkable, pure and simple. There are just some things you don't do. Jesus says, gift wrap your coat as well, and you might find yourself with your shirt and your coat. A man was skating at a local rink, and all of us know that experience. The crowd was going around and around and around, and of course you look around and there are people who are obviously uh, well, uh, feel very much at home with the ice, and then there are other people like me who are uh, making progress on their ankles. <laughs> and so around and around they go, and he says, and then you see the guy who goes in the other direction goes against the masses. He doesn't just skate with the crowd, and then he goes out into the middle, and he does figure eights, and all other kinds of things. And it's clear to you that if you look at him, that he is not taking direction from the beat of the music pouring out of the speakers. He's taking direction from something else, someone else. And Jesus this morning says, that's precisely the point that I'm trying to make. Trace a different in the world's eyes. Personally, I can only speak for myself now. I have no doubt that what Jesus says is the truth. I believe it with all my heart. But at times in my life, because I have had people who come, came against me, I have had moments in life where I felt that people were really unfair to me. I've had moments in life when people that I love have been abused. I find this difficult sometimes, an impossible possibility. But I also, beyond the shadow of any doubt, any doubt that I might have or any doubt you might have, it's the only way to bear witness to the kingdom of God. Ultimately, it's the only way to change the world.